like right now, everybody's holding their breath. They don't want Iran to step into the Gaza war. They don't want it. Why? Well, look what Iran's goal is. This, this is Iran's chief spokesman. And he says, look at the top. We reject the existence of any Israeli on the earth. That's personal. He said, there cannot be that ethnic group. You talk about genocide. They're saying this at the United Nations every time they get up. Israel should be annihilated. Wow. Now, when Iran threatens to take out Tel Aviv, does God care? You bet. Because, uh, you know, they're threatening more and more since. That's the week after the Gaza thing started. But look what the newspaper, this Wall Street Journal, the Israel-Hamas war is tilting global power balance in favor of Russia and China. Now think about this. The Bible says the final war, we call it Armageddon, involves the armies of the East, China, and we know Iran and Russia are involved. This is what American news is talking about. Our Navy, you know, America's the biggest military power in the world, just deployed the Navy all the way around the world to prepare. This is not a Christian place. This is a U.S. news, a, a secular outfit, to prepare for WW3. What is that? The world is talking about what the Bible describes. That's fascinating. Here's a summary of what God says. God's word describes Iran's attack of Israel as what starts the end of the world. When is that in the Bible? Well, look at this. This is Daniel 9. This chart, the bottom of it, is what Daniel 9 says. And Daniel 9 says 70 weeks is, is planned by God for your people. There will be 69 weeks and then a final week. And after the 69th week, Messiah the Prince will be cut off, crucified. Jerusalem will be destroyed, A.D. 70. And then there's this, what we call the interval, the, the gap. And then seven years will be left, we call the Great Tribulation. In the middle of it, the temple will be, that has been rebuilt, will be desecrated by the Antichrist. He'll break the covenant. He'll set up the image of himself. And now look, we know for sure the rapture kicks off the seven events, but there are three wars that are talked about in the Bible. The Psalm 83 war, the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, and the Revelation 16 and 19. Everyone knows that when it's called Armageddon. Everyone's kind of heard of this when it's called the Magog invasion. Few people have heard about this one. When do all these things happen? We don't know. Look at all those question marks. The Bible does not give us a complete map. It just tells us Psalm 83 is going to happen, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is going to happen, Revelation 16 to 19 is going to happen. Well, what does it say in Psalm 83? Well, look at this. This is the Psalm 83 war. Moab, now what it is is in Psalm 83, it lists off geographic area where ethnic groups lived. And all I did is add to it who lives there now. This group of people are not historically contemporaneous. They lived across the time. I mean, Amalek, Amalek is 3,000 years ago. Philistia is 3,000 years ago. Assyria is only 2,600 years ago. You know what I mean? It's, it's like this is across the whole spectrum of Bible history attacking Israel. That group of people never attacked Israel at the same time. But in Psalm 83, they do. So... Is God going to restore uh, people from the past, or is he going to just use people that are living in the same places that have the same goal? Well, that's what Psalm 83 is. Who lives in all those places? In Moab are the central Jordanians and the Palestinians. The Hagarines are Egyptians because Hagar was the matriarch of uh, Egypt. You know, Hagar comes from Egypt. Gabal, that area, that's Hezbollah. That's northern Lebanon. Ammon, that's the Ammonites. Those are the Palestinians and the people in North Jordan. Amalek, they lived in the Sinai area. They were the Arabs down there. Philistia, that's where Hamas is. Tyre, 
it's still a part of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. And Assyria are the Syrians and northern Iraqis. Guess what? All of those people right now are actively thinking about attacking Israel right now. Hezbollah has already started. Uh, the, the Palestinians in Jordan are trying to sneak across into the West Bank. The Arabs of the Sinai are causing Israeli problem, uh, military problems. Uh, the Syrians, Israel, and the United States are bombing Syria almost every day. Do you know that? You Americans, your country, American soldiers are fighting Syria right now. Okay, that's Psalm 83. This is the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. This is a little different. This is not a little thing. This is when the Russian army, all of the, what we would call Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, all that, where D Darius is from, okay? Just think your cook, Darius, okay? That area. Iran. Do you know what Iran is called in the Bible? Persia. Did you know Daniel says there's a demonic fallen angel, the prince of Persia, who is going to cause Iran, Persia, to always want to destroy Israel? Where was, do you remember uh, Haman and the whole destroy Israel thing? He was in what we would call Persia. The, the, the Persians have always been involved in threatening Israel. Algeria and Libya, and then Ethiopia and Sudan come. That's what Ezekiel describes. Now, you're probably asking, uh, what, what could happen? Well, here's one thing. The, the Sarmat missile, you see the battle for Ukraine is going on, and Russia is threatening uh, Western Europe because they keep helping the Ukraine. Let me just tell one weapon that might get turned loose. A Sarmat missile travels four and a half miles per second. It's nine times faster than a bullet. One, one missile can destroy 250,000 square miles. One missile could destroy the entire nation of France instantly. That's how deadly these things are. Did you know that Russia now, almost every week, on their public news station, goes like this and says, if you guys keep fighting in U the Ukraine, we're going to use our missiles. They've brought them out. They've loaded them on trucks. They're moving them all over their country. So that's interesting. What, what about us? I mean, this, this is what young people, I love teaching college kids. They always have question and answer. So you don't have to ask this one at the Q&A chapel, okay? I'll just give it to you now. What happens to America according to Bible prophecy? Well, all I can say is America's not mentioned, okay? The Roman Empire's mentioned, China's mentioned, Russia's mentioned, Iran's mentioned, Ethiopia is mentioned. America's not mentioned. You know, if God knew everything in the future, why was he so unable to mention us? Have you ever thought about that? He knew Cyrus by name 150 years before Cyrus was born. He calls him by name. He says he's going to come. Why are we not mentioned? Well, five reasons. Maybe we're just a part of the Antichrist revived Roman Empire. That is very possible. Why? Because the Roman Empire, the final expression of it is Great Britain. Great Britain had the largest empire that's ever been in the world. The sun never set on them. They were global empire. They had a colony. That's us. So we would be, by extension, and many Bible prophecy people think we're part of the Roman Empire. But what about this? Have you been reading the news? I know you're in Korea, but have you read the news? America now is spending a trillion dollars a year on interest for our debt. That's one-fourth of our whole budget, and it's going up fast. The, the interest, you know, interest rates are going up. We could implode financially because of now, since I made that slide, it's gone up another trillion. It's $33 trillion. That's an incomprehensible amount of money. It could be America breaks into smaller groups of states. You're noticing that. They can't even get along in Congress right now. Idaho is trying to take an annex part of Oregon. The northern part of California is trying to break off from the southern part and make their own state. You know what I mean. We have all this disunity, and America stops being united and just become states. Or we explode. Russia stops threatening and actually launches two to four of those Sarmat missiles. Two of them would cripple the US completely. And by the way, 
the only country in the world that has an effective missile, anti-missile system, they just used it four days, five, six days ago, is Israel. They're the only one that's ever stopped a ballistic missile in space. The only country in the world is Israel. America does not have the capacity to stop the Sarmat missiles at uh, four miles per second. So we explode. Or we fade out. Did you know that Korea, North Korea, could send one little fishing boat off the coast of the United States, open the hatch, let out one of their advanced Scud missiles, just have it go up 120 miles and pop up there. It would send a pulse of electromagnetic radiation down. It would stop all of America's electric grid. If they did one off the West Coast, they'd, they'd cripple the whole country. Or, right now, America is under a 1,200-year mega drought. It rained recently, but that could happen. What are the dangers of fighting Iran? Well, I mean, all the newspapers, this is not Christian stuff, this is just newspapers in Europe. They talk about the six terrifying steps, this is on October 21st, that could spiral into World War III by the British and U.S. boots on the ground, and that Israel gets overreactive, the war spreads to Lebanon, Syria and Russia join forces, Iran starts fighting, the U.S. and U.K. enter the fight, boy, we've already moved. The two largest ships we have in the world off the coast of Lebanon are right there right now, the largest uh, multi-billion dollar aircraft carriers. And then what if Saudi Arabia is forced to take sides? Uh, there's a clock ticking. Iran will soon have a functioning nuclear weapon. And Israel knows that. And the one thing Israel has committed to is survival. And they, that's why Isaiah 17 is so interesting. Israel might have to bomb Damascus to prove their point. And it says in Isaiah 17, Damascus is destroyed. Will, will this go wider? Will it trigger what we see in Armageddon? Interesting.